Ah, I love these days when the flowers are in bloom and the leaves and the trees are green. And amazingly, they aren't even plastic. This is the kind of day when the world should be framed and hung in an art gallery. The kind of day when nothing can budge me from the peace and serenity of my bed of flowers. <laughs> Garfield, lunch is ready. The kind of day when the flowers can wait because lunch is ready. <laughs> hey, Yodi, what's new? Tell me later, I want to eat now. Huh? Here you go, guys. I made you. <laughs> Quick! Slow motion. Thank you, Odie. I don't know what's wrong. I've been sneezing all the time lately. <laughs> Refill, please. <sighs> no, it isn't all the time. It's just when I'm around you. What? Could I be allergic to cats? No, Mr. Arbuckle. The test shows you're definitely not allergic to cat hair. Uh, but I keep sneezing every time Garfield is around. And I'm not sneezing now. Are you sure, Doc? Well, according to this, you're only allergic to a few things. Antelope, a goldenrod, and grilled asparagus. No cat hair. So why do I sneeze around Garfield? There is one possibility. On TV tonight, there's a show about it. I think you should watch. And now the human emotional specialist. Sometimes sneezing is not caused by a cold or allergy. Sometimes it's caused by suppressed anger. Hmm? Anger? But I'm not angry at Garfield. Well, not all the time. You see, suppressed anger is anger you hide. Sometimes you even hide it from yourself, and you don't know what's inside of you, but it has to come out somehow, and sometimes it comes out as a sneeze. Oh, that's ridiculous. Uh, if this is the case, you either have to deal with the anger or get rid of whatever's making you angry. Let's go have dinner. I made a huge roast turkey with all the trimmings. <laughs> That nutty doctor, I am not mad at Garfield, and that is not making me sneeze. Garfield! You ate the entire turkey dinner? You ate all the mashed potatoes and stuffing and corn pudding and rolls? Do you have any shame? <laughs> Did you leave anything for us? Here, make a wish. Me, I'm wishing for another turkey. I get my wish. I can't be allergic to Garfield. There's got to be a sneezing cure of some kind. I'm researching something online, Odie. Remember, everything you read on the internet is absolutely true. Here's a site that says wearing garlic can cure sneezing. Oh, I need garlic. A dozen bulbs of garlic. That'll stop my sneezing. Liz won't come near me for a month, but it'll stop my sneezing. <laughs> Oh, I've got to try something else. Someone online said a hot bath can cure sneezing. <sighs> and it seems to be working. It's funny, I came in to run the water and I found the tub was already full. So I jumped in. Hey, what are you doing in my crab gumbo? <gasps> uh, needs more salt and less John. Heat lamp. That will stop sneezing. <laughs> ah, this should do it. <laughs> Hold still. I'm adding the melted butter. Oh. That's it. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to see that doctor on TV! As 
I said on my show, Mr. Arbuckle, sneezing can be caused by anger. This cat of yours, tell me everything he does. Well, he sleeps. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What else? Uh, he eats. Uh, yes, what else? That's it. That's it? Well, once in a while, he torments our puppy, Yodi, or the mailman. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How exactly does he torment this puppy? <laughs> How doesn't he? Uh, last week, for instance, he got a box of gelatin mix. Then he poured it into Odie's water dish. I see. I see. Now, were you mad at your cat for doing this? Mad? Well, maybe a little mad, but no. I don't get mad at Garfield. Mm-hmm. Well, you said he did something to your mailman. Every day, practically. It's like Garfield waits for him. The other day, he took our vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Now, did that make you mad at your cat, Arbuckle? Be honest. Yes, I... No, I don't let those things bother me. I almost did, though. It was about three weeks ago. I know, you're thinking the ice cream truck will be along any minute and you want some. The answer is no. N-O, no. I don't feel like walking out to the curb. Hmm. <laughs> The ice cream truck sounds like it's getting real close. Could I have some money for a quart of lasagna ripple? Well, Mr. Arbuckle, it's obvious what's making you sneeze. You can't admit that you're mad at your cat. I am mad at my cat. I didn't want to say those words, but you're right, Doctor. I'm mad at my cat. I'm very mad at my cat. Say the words, Arbuckle. I'm mad at my cat. You must confess before the entire world. I'm mad at my cat. Louder, Arbuckle. I'm mad at my cat. Who's doing all that yelling? Oh, some guy who's mad at his cat. Is he really mad at his cat? He sounds really mad at his cat. I'm mad at my cat! Oh, he must be that Arbuckle guy. Oh, the one with the cat that eats all the lasagna. <laughs> I did it, Doctor. I confronted my anger. I admitted I was mad at my cat. Excellent, my boy. Now I just have to do one more thing, and you'll be rid of your sneezing problem forever. <sighs> Anything. What is it? Well, now, of course, you get rid of your cat. Of course, I'll get rid of my cat, and then I won't be sneezing and... Get rid of my cat? Get rid of Garfield? Of course. He makes you sneeze, and as you admit, you are mad at him. But, 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 but I, I, I couldn't get rid of Garfield. That would be like getting rid of my right arm. Think it over, Arbuckle. If you don't have the courage to get rid of your cat, do you know what people will say to you? Yeah. They're going to say tight a lot. Thank you, Doctor. What an odd young man. I can't understand why he won't cure his problem. Patience gone? Good. It's our wedding anniversary, you know. And you have to drive me to my mother's house. <clears throat> yes, dear. Achoo! Achoo! John's home. Woody, I've decided I've given John a pretty bad time lately. You? Yeah. I have an attack of conscience at least once a year. I'm going to give him a gift to apologize. Garfield, I found out my sneezing was caused because I was angry at you. Well, I've decided something. No matter what you do, I'll never, ever be mad at you again. No matter what I do? Wow. OK. <laughs> Here's something for you. Oh, you picked me some flowers. 
That's nice, Garfield. And you have so many different kinds. You have daisies and daffodils and goldenrod and... <laughs> goldenrod? Yeah, goldenrod. It's been blooming outside lately. <laughs> <laughs> and I just love to sleep in it and roll around in it. You've been rolling around in goldenrod? A flower I'm <laughs> allergic to? That's what's been making me <laughs> sneeze? And I went through all those cures and went to that doctor and <laughs> and all that because of that? I'm mad at you, Garfield! No matter what you do, I'll never be mad at you again. Gee, that didn't last long. I'm mad at my cat! It's... I'm oh, mad at my poor cat! Poor man, it sounds like he's got a cold. Or maybe it's an allergy I'm to goldenrod. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. You are about to enter another dimension. A dimension of sight and sound and lasagna. A dimension known as the Garfield Zone. Uh-oh, this looks like it's gonna be one of those real weird episodes. This unremarkable house in this unremarkable neighborhood belongs to John Arbuckle, who is, oddly enough, unremarkable. And the somewhat overweight creature is John Arbuckle's cat, Garfield, about to wreak havoc and terror. Translation, I'm waiting for the mailman. <laughs> You should check your oil more often. You're down a court. I quit. I'm going home. Hmm. Then you won't be needing this lunch you packed, right? Hmm. Liverwurst. Whoa! The next morning, fate comes early. All right, Buckle. Door. John Arbuckle, I am Professor Bonkers, head of scientific type research at Postal Headquarters. You and your cat are to come with us. What if we don't want to? Huh? Huh? We brought you here to correct a situation that is intolerable and in sorry need of correction. We cannot have citizens' pets oh, oh. terrorizing our mailmen. Oh, that. <laughs> hey, I smell something edible. Mr. Arbuckle, you have been selected to participate in an experiment that will revolutionize mail delivery as we know it. Here is the mail that was to be delivered to you this morning. I am going to demolecularize it. <gasps> huh? Hey, my mail! There was a letter there from my mother. Uh... <laughs> huh? Your mail, oh. Mr. Arbuckle. Observe. The proper way for a pet to pester a postman. Meow. Meow, meow. Meow. Whoa. Ah. Ooh, that hurt. Ah. Missed. What is that? From now on, your mail will be delivered by a holographic mailman. A holographic mailman? A three-dimensional image capable of delivering digitized mail. We had to find a way of protecting our mailmen from creatures such as your cat. <laughs> have a nice day, Mr. Arbuckle. I've got to have another run at this. <laughs> Ouch! Oh, this is terrible. What am I going to do? I know what I'll do. I'll have another taco. Hey! Too late. And so the cat licked the plate clean. But what he didn't realize was that a tiny drop of taco sauce dripped off one whisker and fell into the computer master control. A drop that would short circuit and reprogram things so the cyber mailman would no longer deliver today's mail. He would begin to deliver tomorrow's mail. Too bad, cat. 
cats. Sorry, dogs. You won't have this mailman to kick around anymore. Especially this cat. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Arbuckle. Huh? Your mail. Oh, uh, thanks. Oh, wait. I have your morning newspaper for you, too. Oh. Have a nice day. <laughs> He's out there, Odie, and he's mocking me. Hmm, this is odd. This newspaper I just got has the winning lottery numbers in it. But I thought the drawing wasn't until tonight. <laughs> this is even odder. This isn't today's date on the newspaper. It's tomorrow's date. That afternoon, he bought a ticket. The numbers in the newspaper were 1, 7, 23, 30, 40, 41. Bonus number 21. And now it's time for this week's winning lottery number. They are as follows. 1, 7, 23, 30, 40, and 41. The bonus number 21. Yeah, I have all the numbers. I'm rich. I'm filthy rich. Say we join you, Moody. <laughs> And I owe it all to somehow getting tomorrow's newspaper today. Gee, I wonder if tomorrow I'll get the newspaper for the day after. And as it turned out, that's exactly what happened. Here you go, Mr. Arbuckle. Yes! And so every day, he bought another lottery ticket. 3, 13, 22, 31, 41, 42, bonus number 11. And every evening, he won. That would be 3, 13, 22, 31, 41, 42, bonus number 11. <sighs> Another million dollars. Maybe I'll take tomorrow off and I won't enter the lottery. Huh? <laughs> Boy, that's cute. <laughs> On second thought, maybe I'd better enter. I may need that money. <laughs> Soon, everyone knew of his incredible luck. Mr. Arbuckle, you've now won the lottery 42 times in a row. How the heck do you do it? Oh, I guess I'm just a good guesser. Well, I suppose you're going to turn over your fortune to some famous investment expert like Bernie Scamberry who'll triple your money? Well, mostly I've been feeding my cat. I haven't decided what to do. <gasps> hey, what was that name again? Triple my money. Hmm. An hour later, John Arbuckle was in the office of the famed investment counselor, Bernard Scamberry. Here it is, Mr. Scamberry, a certified check for everything I've won. Good, and I'll take care of your money. Uh, this is a mistake. <laughs> yeah, I would have used it to buy every Italian restaurant in town. Oh, and with the change, I would have picked up a little hot dog cart. <laughs> you won't regret this, Mr. Arbuckle. I turn millionaires into billionaires, and billionaires into trillionaires. Great, Bernie. I just know I can trust you. <sighs> Looks like rain. You think it's going to rain, Garfield? I can check. I can look at tomorrow's newspaper and see if it rained today. Uh-huh. It says today was cloudy, but no precipitation. See, it says it right here under the photo of Bernie. Bernie? Authorities say investment counselor Bernard Scamberry has fled to Brazil with millions of dollars in clients' money. <laughs> He's gone. So is your money. <laughs> and now from the window, they can almost hear him say, when I get to Brazil, I'll send you a postcard with your money. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Looks like Bernie made off with the money. Well, it's not so bad. As long as I'm getting newspapers from the future, I can still win the lottery and make it all back. <clears throat> you know, I haven't bought a ticket for tonight's drawing. Let's see what the winning numbers are. <gasps> hey, read that. Uh, what's so important, Garfield? Hmm, 
Mysterious explosion destroys post office experimental lab. Hey, that's the place they took us to. <laughs> uh, too bad about that, but... <laughs> Arbuckle and his cat raced for the lab. Their intentions were good, but they hadn't realized something. You cannot change the future. Something is amiss with the central core of the Cyber Mailman Digitizer. There seems to be a short circuit. How could that have happened? It is impossible. Unless, of course, someone dripped taco sauce inside of it. Hurry, guys! Hurry! This is the post office. Nobody hurries around here. I smell smoke. Is there any chance of that thing blowing up? None whatsoever. I would stick my reputation on it. This lab is about to explode! I will not, however, stake my life on it. Oh. Oh. Well, here goes the Cyber Mailman project. It will be years before we could restore it. Which means no more future newspaper deliveries to me. <sighs> but that's not the worst part of it. No, the worst part of it was that Herman Post, career letter carrier, had to go back to delivering mail the old-fashioned way. <clears throat> <laughs> I did it! I delivered the mail without running into that cat! Whoa! That's what you get for bringing nothing but bills all the time. <laughs> no, no. Submitted for your approval. A mailman who thought science could catapult them into the future without cats. He should have known there's no escaping destiny and... The Garfield Zone. <gasps> I told you this was going to be one of those weird episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there. If you're waiting for something exciting to happen, forget it. This is an 11 and a half minute cartoon, and I'm going to take an 11 and a half minute nap. Oh, and Odie's not here. He's visiting John's brother out at the farm. <sighs> oh, and John's at work, so nothing can bother me. <sighs> Garfield! Wait till you see what I've got here. I don't know what it is, but I'll bet it's a storyline. I brought you a new friend. Thought you could use the company while Odie is staying at Doc Boy's farm. <laughs> John thinks I'm missing this, and this, and this. My editor is out of town, but he's letting me take care of... Ta-da! His parrot, Paxton! <laughs> Aren't you excited, Garfield? Paxton talks! Go ahead, Paxton. Say something. You call this a house? It looks like it was built to store fertilizer for the rest of the world. Uh, <laughs> and this furniture. If you don't want to get rid of it, you'll have to have it reupholstered before the dump will accept it. My editor left the country and didn't take Paxton along. I can see why. Well, I'll let you guys get to know each other. I have work to do. <laughs> so, Garfield. What do you do all day? A lot of this. At first, I didn't know it was a cat. I thought it was a hairy basketball. That's right. I'm taking care of my boss's parrot, Doc Boy. Hey, how's Odie? As you can hear, he's doing great. So, what's this parrot like? Well, he's kind of funny in his own odd way. Right now, he's probably spreading joy all over the neighborhood. Uh, 
Did you know that 62.3% of all mail contains bad news? No, I didn't know. I've been delivering mail for 37 years. Well, don't worry. You won't have that job much longer. Email is already making you obsolete. It is. <laughs> I'll be bringing Odie home later today. Okay, I gotta go. I think my mail's here. See you later, Doc Boy. <laughs> Hello? Don't call me Doc Boy! What was I going to do next? Oh, right, the mail. <laughs> Herman, what's wrong? <laughs> Here's your mail, Mr. Arbuckle. I'm sorry, 62.3% of it is bad news. But don't worry, I won't have this job much longer. I'm obsolete. <laughs> Did you hear something? If I didn't know better, I'd think it sounds like mice crying. <laughs> and have you seen what they're putting in cheese these days? Plus, they're building better mouse traps. I'm just saying. <laughs> and remember, even though Garfield won't eat you, there are plenty of cats out there who will. Paxton, why do you always look at the bad side of everything? Why? Why? Come on, I'll show you why. Watch this. Good afternoon. It's four o'clock and I'm Sylvia Tuba Player with the six o'clock news. Our top headlines. Today in the world, this happened. <gasps> and in another part of the world, this happened. <gasps> and in several other parts of the world, this happened. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in the stock market. Just trust me, you don't want to know. Oh, that's so depressing. I'll call Liz and see what she recommends. Haven't you ever had fun? Haven't you ever laughed? Well, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make you laugh. Music, maestro. <laughs> Wasn't that hilarious? Laugh? I thought I'd never start. You should leave comedy to the pros and stick to what you do best. You are about to become an ex-parrot. Liz suggests we take him to Dr. Whipple. You're not taking me to any doctor. <laughs> Wait! Come back! Good riddance. Having him around was too depressing. Oh, if I lose my boss's parrot, he'll fire me! That's even more depressing. Oh, uh, search the neighborhood. I'll go this way, you go that way. <laughs> we just need to follow the trail of depressed people. <laughs> it's just awful. A parrot told me that I, the core man with a capital G, the world's most famous food critic, is grossly overweight, maybe a few pounds. Oh, it's awful. A parrot just told me that I'm putting on so much weight, I've started to look like Eddie Gourmand, the world's famous food critic. <laughs> Oh, it's awful. A parrot just told me that I'm annoying and conceited and that I make some people physically sick just to have me around. Hey, when he's right, he's right. <laughs> and there's so much mercury in a fish, you can take your temperature with a halibut. 
I never knew everything was so awful. <laughs> oh, not only that, but the air that we... <laughs> We're taking you to see Dr. Whipple. And if you're nice, John will buy you some ice cream. Oh, great. I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> Now, just lie there and tell me how you got to be so utterly and totally negative. Well, I guess it all started when I was an egg. Mm hmm, mm hmm. My mother started passing out recipes for omelets. What? That's awful. Dr. Whipple will cure Paxton's down on the mouth outlook. He's a brilliant man and very strong. Here, <laughs> take this poor parent home. I can't help him. Oh. I can't even help myself. <laughs> oh, this is... this is terrible. Hey, if you really feel like crying, wait till you see the bill you're gonna get for this. Uh. <laughs> and... Not only is this planet doomed, but have you seen the full TV schedule? <laughs> Even massive quantities of lasagna couldn't cheer me up now. Can't you think good thoughts about anything? What? <laughs> Name me one thing in this world that's pure and innocent and happy. Huh? John, I brought Odie back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm glad to see you too, boy. <laughs> hey, even I'll admit I'm glad to see you too. Huh? Odie, this is our new friend Paxton the parrot. Hey, 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 knock it off, mutt. You don't know where that tug's been. It's unsanitary. It's messy. It's it's uh, it's kind of nice in a way. <laughs> hey, is he always this happy? Yeah, you think this is happy? Try throwing a stick he can fetch. He'll be your best friend forever. Oh. Gee, I never had a best friend. I never had a friend of any kind. Huh? Ah. Oh. Looks like you've got one now. What's this all about, John? I'm not sure. <laughs> it's about a parrot who's finding a whole new way to look at the world. Wow! It's been six months since my boss took Paxton back, and now I can't believe that parrot has his own TV show. What's so odd about that? I have my own TV show, and a darn good one at that. And now, here he is, the most popular motivational speaker parrot in the entire world, Paxton. Oh, yeah. Thank you, thank you. You're beautiful. And you know what else is, people? Life is. You just have to know where to look. I'll be talking about that on today's show, about how there's wonderment and love and happiness out there if you just let it in. But first... I want to dedicate tonight's show to my best friend forever, Odie the Puppy. Hiya, Odie! Odie, that's you! Well, the 11 and a half minutes is almost up, so this is the end of the cartoon. I'll just add that Paxton's right. Life is great. But it's even better with pizza. Consider how amazing the Earth is. How fascinating each and every person on it can be. <sighs> oh, it's you. Yeah, I'm taking a nap. I deserve it. After all, I just saved the entire planet. That's right. The whole planet and everyone on it, you included. You see, it all started far out in space. I mean, far out. They have this popular chain of fast food restaurants. They're all over the galaxy. You'll find one on practically every asteroid. Welcome to Neptunian Nuclear 
chicken. May I take your order, please? I will have the Jupiter-sized module of chicken wings. Extra crunchy. Jupiter space bat, extra crunchy. Oh, and a side of coleslaw. One side of coleslaw. Thank you. Now you might be wondering how I know about this, right? Well, I've seen this cartoon before. Mm -hmm. So anyway, this chain of restaurants is owned by this not very nice guy. What do you mean? I can't open another bajillion restaurant. No one tells me what I can't do. But Commander Harlan, we have not enough chickens. Maybe not, but we will. Come with me. Where are we going? Anticipating this need, I set up a secret research outpost on Earth. In no time at all, they were streaking towards Earth where certain individuals you may recognize were stopping for chow. We're just going in for a small snack. Do you know what a small snack is, Garfield? Do you know what a foolish question is, John? Even if you took every chicken on this planet, it would not be enough for your needs, Commander. That is why we've developed a ray that will turn every man, woman, and animal on this planet into... <laughs> A chicken! Bring in the test subject, and we'll see how it works. <laughs> Pepperoni and a mushroom. Uh. A sausage and a black olive. <laughs> the meat lover is special. <laughs> ay, 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 leave some room, Garfield. We're making a lasagna. <laughs> I don't see your delivery boy working today, Vito. Oh, I just sent him to make a delivery across the street. He'll be right back. No, he wouldn't be, because the delivery boy was about to become the delivery chicken. But I just came to deliver a pizza. Just stand there for one more moment. <laughs> this ray, this will really transform him into, yes. <laughs> a chicken! Oh. You owe me Get back to Vito's. Twelve dollars for the pizza plus. It worked! Can we fry him now? Not yet. First, I have to bombard the entire city. It will work faster on some than others, but soon they will all be chickens. <laughs> Everyone? Every Earth creature except anyone who is at this moment ingesting an inhuman quantity of ricotta cheese, tomato paste, and pasta. <laughs> Who would imagine that an inhuman quantity of ricotta cheese, tomato sauce, and pasta could taste so good? Mmm, <laughs> that was great. Hey, Odie, something wrong? Uh-uh. Oh, my God! <laughs> Odie, that's the worst chicken imitation I've ever seen. <laughs> That was the best one. What do I do? What do I do? Oh, I know. I'll ask John. We should be going, Garfield. We have to stop on the way home and. Tell me it's not so. Tell me John and Odie haven't been turned into chickens. <laughs> Ah, 
Italian chicken, chicken parmesan. I have to get out of this coop, a uh, restaurant. <laughs> help, I need help, lots of help. A policeman, he help. Officer, officer, I would like to report two people and a dog being mysteriously transformed into chickens. Buck, 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 buck. Crazy things are happening. As the chickening of the population spread across the state, the governor called a hurried press conference. <laughs> this is awful. This is a disaster. Things could not be worse. This be a lesson to you. Never say things could not get worse. Things will always find a way of getting worse. It landed in the park. It was met by the rotten commander Harlan. It will take many trips, but we'll transport all the chickens back home. <laughs> I can hardly wait to start frying them all up. Frying them all up? How are you going? to get them all into our spacecraft. Simple. Chickens love corn. I need to find some way to get inside. Uh, and then he... <clears throat> I joined the procession of poultry. And I would have made it too, except I suddenly remembered something awful. <laughs> I'm allergic to chicken feathers. <laughs> Aren't you even going to say gazunte? Stop that, cat. <laughs> <laughs> Turn me into a chicken. Turn everyone into a chicken. You notice this guy only has one idea? But I'm going to... Huh? See the two with the real dumb expressions? I think those are John and Odie. You might as well give up. I'm trapped. Farewell, Cathood. I hope I'm this good looking when I'm a chicken. I don't know how you escaped my transformation ray, cat. Do you by any chance eat huge quantities of lasagna? Mm. Well, that explains it. But you'll never eat it again, you hear me? From now on until you're served in a bucket. It's chicken feed for you. <laughs> no, no! Not me! I'm not! <laughs> <laughs> oh no, all out of chicken. Oh, but wait, now's my chance to try out these earth chickens. So now the question is, how do I change everyone in town back into everyone in town? Oh, you look positively scrumptious. Uh, hey, this might work out. Don't worry, you're going to be delicious. Now, where's that spatula? <laughs> so, how would you like someone to prevent you from winding up next to a little cup of cold slaw? Uh, please! Well, I think we can make a deal. And a deal we made. And I'll say this for the guy. 
He was a chicken of his word. He told me how to change him back, and then he changed everyone else back, including you. He even blanked out all your memories, so you have no idea that you were ever a chicken. Then, as he agreed, he and his aide left the Earth after promising never to return for takeout. And that's how I saved the entire planet. And now everything is back to normal. I'm going to go start making dinner, Garfield. We're having, uh... Um... Nut fried chicken. Lasagna. Fine. Like I said, everything is back to normal. Except, of course, John does lay an egg once in a while, which I don't understand at all because boy chickens don't lay eggs. <laughs> <laughs>